Well, we always get these challenges. These are all parts of a, um, a printing press. There's a roller here. And this arm is broken. It's a cast iron arm. And you can see there's very, very little material here. Um, that's the top end of it. And being bronze, they tried to repair it. And it's got a taper pin in here. So the real challenge, of course, is to emulate this on the manual machine, getting the center exactly in place, uh, doing the radius around here. I'm gonna make it out of steel, of course. Um, and then marrying it up so that when I, I drill through and pick up that tapered hole. So that's going to be the real, real challenge. Okay, the natural process to make this part, this broken part that I showed before from um, a printing press, uh, would be to take some square bar and, um, and start working on that. And there's so many facets here and in so many different directions and holes and um, machined round and so forth. So the, there's a, it's a difficulty in holding this and messing around with it. So what I've decided to do was I've taken a piece of 4140 because this is only cold rolled and I wanted something a little bit stronger. I don't have anything in the square or, or that, so I've taken a round bar and that will give me the ability to set this whole thing up um, in the um, in the dividing head. And by using the divi dividing head, I'll be able to tilt it and turn it around. So I'll be working on it, and most of the time I'll be working like this. I'll be able to do the machining, turn it through 90 degrees, do the other parts, drilling and so forth. So um, that's the way I'm going. Well, once again, this is a, a Saturday morning, making these parts for, um, uh, to replace this casting, broken casting from a, um, <clears throat> a pretty press. So instead of using the conventional way of working it and cutting all these facets and keep relocating all the time and setting up, I opted to go with some round bar. Uh, this is a 4140 round bar and the results of not a lot of work at all, I've already produced Part of, part of the way. Now I can scallop out and finish it just using this corn cob to rough it out. And um, an, an hour's work has, sa has probably saved an hour of setting up. Moving ahead with uh, building the new part, um, and what we, as I mentioned in previous posts, we're using the, um, uh, the dividing head to be able to swing it around and around and do all the different facets. Now what I need to do is to position that bolt hole, uh, rather the rod hole, and in t to do that I can't reach the Thomas, it doesn't have enough height. So I'm going to use the Jimbo, which has uh, the, is the long neck Jimbo, it's got the uh, riser block in it. The chain blocks won't reach, so what I've done is I've, I've brought two, the two tables up and I'm going to slide it over and, and, and bring it in and work with the Jimbo. Okay, we've uh, milled the hole out and um, we're going to try now It'll go on here eventually when we clean all this up, but that's that's the shaft. So we're going to offer the shaft up and see how that goes. That's pretty neat, I think. It's as good as it gets. We'll continue on. Right, we're getting towards the final stages of this um, this part build, and. Uh, so now I just put that in, 
put this other piece up against it, blued it so I could see what the final dims I need to cut around there and trim it down to size. The other, this side is fine. So off we go. Okay, we're getting close to the last stages now. Um, use this uh, mill just to get line up the hole to zero zero um, because the last thing I need to do on this part is to drill a hole through a retention hole through uh, the centre here and that's a tapered hole so I've got this centred so now I want I can lay the the unit over to uh, the, the zero point and I'll be able to then drill that hole and then, and then the next stage is to prune off the part. Bozo lurks in every corner. I just showed before how I'd lined up the part uh, before I turned the head down to be able to drill the hole. However, when I did, when I did that, this hole was on this side. Big, but I realised that I've got to drill the big size, a drill and, and um, ream from the big size, from this side through to there for the taper pin. So I had to turn this through 180 degrees. So I had to go back, machine up a little, um, a little pointy thingy here, place that in the hole and line up and now I can do that, uh, now I can drill the hole that I need to drill. Okay, we got the finale. We got the part made. It's not the most beautiful part in the world, but it fits. All I have to do now is to do the taper pin, and lock it in, and this is what's left of the uh, of the blank that we worked off. So the exercise of machining it from round rather than flat, and using the um, dividing head to get all these facets done in one setup um, worked out very well. By the way, this is my um, go-to marking, uh, uh, bluing stuff. It just sprays on, very easy, clean. This one's made in Australia, of course, by Dymark.
at the goal My pulse was kept untouched 